And just to you, to you, Rabbi Dwight, to the Rabbi, uh, but the Prophet Shaftetsky may not be very well known to many of you who have come from near and far to be with us. So may I invite uh, uh, from the Greek Catholic Church, uh, of, of, uh, the marvelous Bishop Boris Gudziak, uh of the church uh, to come and tell us more about Cardinal Shaftetsky and uh, his, uh, his presentation, his introduction for many of us too, Cardinal Shaftetsky will be followed by uh, a short video. Learning that I was the son of Rabbi Dr. Ezekiel Levin, he put his arm around me and hugged me to his powerful chest. He gently stroked my hair and repeatedly whispered, Poor child. I, deeply, I briefly described the tragic situation of the dying Jewish community and the death camp in Belzitz. The old man, looking like an Old Testament patriarch, listened carefully, tears streaming down his wrinkled cheeks. When I finished, he again embraced me, reflected a while, and suggested that I return in two days. Son, your father was my friend. You can rest assured that I will do all I can. Bring with you the manuscripts, and I will place them in a safe place. However, I have in mind to find a way to save you. These are the words of Kurt Levin, a successful businessman in Israel and in the United States, the son of the chief rabbi of Lviv, saved by Metropolitan Andrei Shiptitsky who has been mentioned more in these days than any other of the righteous. And it's important to note that Ukraine is the fourth country in terms of quantity of those who saved Jews during the Holocaust. Metropolitan Andre was like no other. I believe he was the greatest Ukrainian of the 20th century. A man who, at 35, became the head of a church and led it for 44 years, with six or actually seven government changes, the Austrians, the Poles, the Ukrainian independence, the Soviets, the Nazis, the Soviets again, a patron of arts. No aspect of Ukrainian culture, no aspect of international relations, no aspect of the life of Ukrainians and their relations with Russians, Poles, and Jews was not marked by his creativity, his passion, and his generosity. When he came on visitations to parishes in Galician villages, the Jewish community would come out with the Torah and he would address them in fluent Hebrew. His brother was a Polish general fighting against the Ukrainian armies, but he always maintained a position of reconciliation with the Poles. And the passion of his life was a reconciliation between Catholics and Orthodox, between Russians and Ukrainians. It was mentioned that no hierarch in Europe, no Catholic, or Orthodox 
bishop of his status took such a clear stance against the killing in World War II. When the Holocaust began with the other bloodshed went rampant, he issued a pastoral letter, thou shalt not kill. No national, no political ideology justifies killing. He wrote to Himmler, and after Babinyar in 1942, he wrote to Pius II about the slaughter of the Jews, the shooting of tens of thousands here in Kiev. And so there is the Shepitsky Medal. And there is a community of people here who are coming to know this legacy which should become our orientation in life. Adam Rothfeld, saved by Shepitsky, his brother Clementi, and the Studite Monastic Network. Shimon Redli, a survivor, a professor who is fighting for the recognition of Shepitsky's righteousness, a cause that I invite you all to join. The good rabbi said that God determines who the righteous are. Not always Yad Vashem. Let us all help Yad Vashem do what God has decided. In the case of Shepitsky, Father Omenan Koch, and others, we Ukrainians need to recognize where we have failed. We Christians need to repent where we have sinned. And we have sinned much. But our commemoration today will be futile if we do not strengthen our resolve to know the truth about God and man, about the world in relations between peoples and religions. It will be futile if we do not hear and see the witness of our righteous. In the end, Metropolitan Andre embraced Kurt Levin, countless others, and throughout a lifetime, everyone he met because he loved God and he loved his neighbor. That's what we live for, brothers and sisters. To love God and love our neighbor. Let the person and spirit of Metropolitan Andre be before our eyes. That wrinkled face that Kurt Levin speaks about, the tears of compassion that pour down his cheeks, that embrace the marginalized, the suffering, the one in danger. We are before his person, and we are in the arms and embrace of the God he loved and served. 